Hello. Today, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to take a break, as I said last time, from George Lucas uh, and his films. So I thought I'd segue into a series of films that was who produced his first two films. Uh, that is Francis Ford Coppola, and the films are obviously the Godfather trilogy. Um, now, I'm assuming most of you have seen these films. Um, if not, you know, uh, I recommend to watch them. They're really good. Um, uh, you know, <clears throat> they're well loved, they're well received, and, uh, it just... It's just a good story, I think, all the way through. Um, I'd say uh, if I had to pick a favorite, uh, I would choose uh, the first one. I know it seems to be popular to say, you know, um, part two is the best, but I always love the interactions between Vito Corleone and Michael Corleone. I always enjoyed the chemistry Marlon Brando and Al Pacino had, um, I got really invested in that, and, um, you know, two is still a great film, you know, don't get me wrong, it's just I prefer, if I was to just watch one, I'd watch the first one, uh, just over and over again. Um, you know, this this film, you know, these films, you know, that really made careers, uh, particularly with Al Pacino, uh, he became a household name. Uh, say the same with Robert Duvall. And so many of the cast, you know. Um, the entire cast just does a fantastic job. Um, you know, this film essentially kind of revitalized Brando's career, and you know it, it gives a great performance. Um, he won an Academy Award for Best Actor. I feel, um, at least in a perfect world, I would say that this would happen. Um, I feel Al Pacino should have won an all, uh, the Academy Award for Best Actor as well. Um, and they tied, and they would tie. Pacino and Brando would tie. I personally, myself, think Pacino was better. Um, but they're both so good, you know, it is hard to, for me to come to the, my own conclusion or thought that uh, Pacino was better in the film. I mean, you see more of him uh, than Brando, you know. Well, I may start the focus, the film focuses on uh, Vito Corleone, it shifts over to Pacino, um, because, you know, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, you know, um, and possibly for the other three, or other two films, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, he becomes the godfather, he becomes the man who's in charge of the uh, family business at the end of it. Uh, Pacino does. Um, Michael Corleone. And you know you have Sonny Corleone who's the brother who's the hothead. Um, Robert uh, Robert Duvall plays like Cassie and Eddie. Yeah. Bleh. Cassie and Eddie. Uh, whatever. Bleh can't talk today, I'm very sorry, uh, but you know, the, the, the Don's right-hand man, essentially, the guy who's there in the pinnacle, Cassieri, and I, I'm not even going to try and say that word anymore, uh, I keep uh, messing up, uh, he plays Tom Hagen, he's essentially taken in by the Corleones, and is essentially looked at as a brother to Michael, Fredo, and uh, 
Sunny. Now, uh, uh, and Connie, uh, played by Talia Shire, um, <clears throat> Francis Ford Coppola's uh, sister. Um, Sunny was played by, you know, uh, James Kahn. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just a great film. Uh, Pacino and Duvall and um, Kahn were all nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Pacino didn't like this, the fact at the Oscars that he was nominated for Supporting. Again, he, as he said, I have more screen time than Marlon Brando. Uh, essentially, the film does is essentially about Vito Corleone, uh, you know, he's the godfather, and then he, for the course of the film, he isn't, and Michael is put in charge, and he then begins, he essentially runs the family business, and They're, they're both they're they're great. Um, it's just a great it's just a great film. It's just a great uh, story. And I do agree with Pacino. Um, you know, he should not have been supporting actor. Um, though since those three were all nominated, you would have thought one of them would win. But uh, Joel Gray and Cabaret won supporting actor. Honestly, I would have picked Pacino, uh, since I already said before, I think he should have been nominated for Best Actor with Brando, and would have liked to have seen him one, but since that didn't happen, he should have won Supporting Actor. Cabaret also won Best Director over Coppola, which should not have happened. Uh, I like Bob Fosse, I think he does some great work, but I would feel like, say, all that jazz was a better film, myself. Uh, if he was going to win director or any Oscar, there's films I think it should have been that film. Though that also came out the same year as Apocalypse Now, another Francis Ford Coppola movie, which is right here. Um, Godfather Two, Part Two, he. Uh, Michael Corleone is essentially, you know, he's got a family now, which we kind of saw at the end of the part one, and you see how he is at the, essentially at the top of his power as the on, and he's just really great. Um, I also meant, I forgot to mention John, uh, John Cazale. This isn't going to have people's names in the Yeah, John Cazale, yeah. Uh, people in here. The first one, Richard Castellano. Sterling Hayden. John Marley. Diane Keaton, yeah, she plays uh, Kay. Uh, the girlfriend of, uh, and wife of, uh, Michael Corleone. Uh, now this is, it used to be on the back here, but uh, I just kind of put it in here. Doesn't exactly fit, but it can. And it does. This is a good set, by the way. Are a fan of The Godfather, you probably have this set or some variation of it. But yeah, John Cazale, he's great as Fredo, the brother who is looked at as a screw up, uh, basically. Um, 
And in the second, it goes back and forth between Michael Corleone as the, uh, the I guess you could say the peak of his powers as, again, as I said, as the Dawn, uh, uh, the Godfather. And it also shows Vito Corleone come, going up from, like, you know, Sicily to where his family is killed. And then he comes to America, where he gets the name of... Uh, his name wasn't originally... Actually, no, he's not from Sicily, he's from uh, Corleone, actually. He later goes to see, like, he sees Sicily later in the film, though. I'm kind of jumping ahead, I guess, in that regard, but Godfather 2, it's, it's a good film. Robert De Niro won Best Supporting Actor that year for his portrayal as Vito Corleone, young version, and um, it's the only time in the history of the Academy Awards where Two people won Oscars for the exact same role. Now, nobody has ever won an Oscar for playing the same, like, two people have, haven't won the Oscar for playing the same character for the ex in the same category. It's never happened. It's also never happened that anybody has ever won an Oscar for playing the exact same character. Uh, you know, ever. If anything, they might win it once and never win it for that character again. Um, you know, uh, Pacino was nominated twice for the role. In Godfather 2, he didn't win. He lost to Art Carney for Harry and Tonto. Not a bad film, but I feel he won because, you know, he was an older man and he's a beloved, liked actor. And, you know, Wanted to give him an Oscar before, I guess perhaps it was too late and he might have passed away and he would never get a chance to ever be nominated because I believe that's his only nomination. I could be wrong, but, you know. Um, well, uh, Jack Nicholson in Chinatown was also nominated, um, but I prefer Pacino uh, myself. I'm a Pacino fan, my, uh, personally. And interestingly enough, um, uh, De Niro and Pacino, you know, they're in this film, but they don't have any screen time since, well, you know, uh, but Pacino is essentially in the, uh, I guess what would be considered, I guess, for the film timeline, present day, and De Niro's in the past. And it's a very interesting story for Vito about becoming where he became, and we eventually see in The Godfather. Um, uh, you know, I, there's all there's so much been said about The Godfather 2. Uh, I don't really exactly have anything to truly add to it. Um, John Cazale's great. Thank you. Uh, like all the actors, they're all great. Again, won Best Picture, and Coppola won Director and Adapted Screenplay again, which he also won for, for the first Godfather film, um, one of their awards. Um, but yeah, uh, and then The Godfather Part 3, um, I actually don't mind that film, it's not my favorite of the trilogy, um, um, but I enjoy it, I think it's decent film. It's a good film, honestly. Um, you know, the f people really uh, cite uh, Sofia Coppola as a big problem with the film. Now, you know, when I watched it, you know, I was like a teenager, and I, I didn't think she was awful, the way everybody seems to uh, say she is. She isn't that good, but there are some lines she says that are said well and they're are competent. Perhaps her chemistry with people, I think, could be a big thing. Also, she's not really a, a 
a, a big thing of that very like perhaps the chemistry between her and her cousin played by a oh the name just escaped me hold on Andy Garcia, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Andy Garcia, yeah. Their interactions are, eh, you could say, not necessarily the best, but oh well. Uh, it's not a bad film at all, again. Um, but perhaps if the film was titled how Coppola wanted it to be, which was the death of Michael Corleone, people might not have viewed it as negative as they did. Um, and Duvall wasn't in part three, which bummed people out. And I have to say, it did bum me out as well, because I like Duvall. I think so many people do, because he's a great actor. And he was very important in the first two Godfather films, but there's something with pay and all that, he just... It just didn't come together with him, so it's unfortunate. Um, but regarding the film, and other people think or people say about the film is it was just made for money. And I and there's an interview with Coppola, and he does say he did make it for money. Um, but Mario Puzo also came to him. You know, Mario Puzo, he wrote the f book. The films are based on, and he co-wrote the films with uh, Coppola, and won two Oscars. And he actually approached him about doing a third film. And at first, he wasn't entirely sure exactly, but they, uh, they talked, and he eventually did agree to do it. And he wanted it to be the epilogue. You know, it wasn't supposed to exactly be a trilogy for. Per se, you know, yes, it would be a trilogy because there would be three films, but essentially, it was the the third film was supposed to be just the epilogue of the Godfather saga. But Paramount didn't like that title, and because of the eighties, he, he wasn't at the peak of his powers anymore. Um, the last huge hit was Apocalypse Now. Unfortunately, in the 80s, you know, yeah, he made movies, but just they weren't the hits that he was given, you know. He wrote Patton before he even uh, made uh, The Godfather, and the other thing with the first Godfather, he hated every pretty much every decision Coppola made. They hated Brando, they didn't want Brando at all, because, you know, Brando has a reputation of being a hard actor to work with, and uh, they didn't like Pacino, they thought he was wrong, they didn't like how the film was going to be set in the time period of the books, the 40s, didn't like that, they thought it should be set in the 70s, uh, save money, but Coppola didn't like it, he wanted to be as authentic to the book as possible, and uh, just a lot of problems, but he said, like, uh, I have Patton here. The only reason I mentioned Patton is because he won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, and he said, you know, Paramount, they were just trying to look for any excuse to fire him. But he said, uh, when he won the Oscar for uh, Patton, right again, an Academy Award winner that essentially saved him from being fired off of The Godfather and you know and he got the movie the way he wanted it to be but it was so awful and terrible and it was just not it wasn't really that you know 
it seemed like it was just an awful experience. George Lucas said that was like the worst experience I ever saw a director ever go through for working for a studio. And um, he actually helped with the first Godfather in the editing. He, like after Pacino shoots Sterling Hayden, a uh, gangster who ordered a hit on his dad, he kills them. He leaves. There's a edit of flashes of newspapers that was edited by George Lucas. Um, yeah, but um, I just kind of like off on a tangent, I guess, a little bit. But um, yeah, the, 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 had the Godfather three, you know, been called the death of Michael Corleone and was just an epilogue to the film. Uh, saga, and then you'd have the Godfather trilogy, you know, as it is now. Um, people might not have had been as you know, hard on the film. Another thing, you know, regarding Sofia Coppola again, uh, you know, she wasn't an actress. She didn't really want to be an actress. She really wanted to just be a writer, director, um, which she uh, is now. Um, and Wayona Ryder was supposed to be the be her part, Mary. Uh, she was supposed to be uh, Mary Corleone, but dropped out like a day before she was supposed to like shoot or something along those lines, or perhaps rehearse. But, but anyway, she dropped out. Copa wasn't very happy with that, and, uh, you know, they needed a replacement quick, and was asked his daughter, because, I guess, you know, he didn't have time to, I guess, audition actresses, or try and get, like, a good big name actress that would be around the age needed for Mary Corleone, um, so I guess like his daughter was around the, that age, so he asked her, and she said yes, just because, you know, it's her dad, she wanted, she didn't want to let him down, but then again, you know, there's this thing, I don't really want to act, but he's my dad, he's asking for my help, so I'll help him, and she did her best, uh, What's been said about her has been said. I don't think she's that bad, as everyone uh, says. I think the film itself is overall a fine movie. Um, but yeah, the first Godfather is my favorite. Uh, it just kind of goes from that order. Uh, Godfather 2 and Godfather 3. Um, but as a story, when you watch them all back to back, which is, which is long, First film's 177 uh, minutes, just three minutes away from being three hours. Uh, second is 202 minutes, over three hours. Has an intermission. And the last one is 170 minutes, so 10 minutes away from being three hours. Uh, these are essentially epic films could say, um, as close to a modern day epic, if you will, in terms of length, perhaps, um, at least before the uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, it was that trilogy, in terms of length and scale, um, but yeah, um, Great films, uh, I love them. They're some of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I'm sure any movie fan will say the same. Uh, the Pacino is fantastic in all three. Part three is also the only film where Pacino did not get nominated for an Academy Award, which he should have. Um, I personally would have 
chosen to give him the Oscar for all three films. It's also the only movie not to win Best Picture. Uh, Godfather 2 is the first sequel to ever win Best Picture. Um, um, you know, Goodfellas and uh, Dances with Wolves were also nominated for Best Picture when, uh, in the same year as Godfather 3, so they had some competition. A lot of people think Goodfellas should have won. Um, you know, um, there's a good argument for that. Uh, but Dances with Wolves won instead. But hey, sometimes the Academy gets it right, sometimes they don't. I already talked about that. But, you know, these are three great films. Uh, good story. I'm watching them all. So, uh, since they're all about three hours, it'll be like watching like nine hours of films. Uh, so it's like, you could probably watch all three on, in a week and get up early enough. Also have good enough breaks in between films. And even during the intermission of part uh, two. And uh, I think you could... Uh, if you haven't seen these films, you could just enjoy them. For the first time, I think I think any f film fan would like these movies. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I really don't know exactly what else to say. Uh, all that's been said has been said about these films. I've spoken my piece of what I think about these films. I enjoy them. I love them. They're great. And I shall see you all next time because that's all I've got right now. And uh, I've kind of rambled and I apologize for that, but I will see you all next time. Take care.